I want all that smoke, turn me into ashes. Want you on my skin, nicotine patches. I just want to take you like a deep breath. And go have one single cigarette. Say, so give me that smoke, all them flames, all that heat, keep it calm. And I want what my emergency is my woman. But just let me burn, I should have learned. But no, 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 I want all that smoke. All right, so I got another festival for you here. This time, we're switching the whole festivals. You're seeing multi-views with ME1 going to the entire house. So we're here in a stadium, and we're feeding every single display in the stadium. Then we also have the Jumbotron, or the large LED wall that's hanging in the stadium. That one's coming from ME2. Now, we're doing a really cool thing here where we're linking the stage screens with the Jumbotron for certain things like sponsor loops and whatnot. And then we have just some sumos here with the live feed, as well as the Jumbotron over there. We have multiple stages where we're bringing in cameras from the B stage so we can show it on main stage and vice versa. Main stage feed to show it on B stage during set changes and things like that to hype up the crowd. So we're running all this with an 8K constellation. That's this rack right here. We have our Hyperdex for records. We have an ATEM SDI Extreme ISO just to record some ISOs in sync, which we then can replace with the 4K feeds later. Redundant playback devices. So I have blue, white, and brown in this case, and I just color-coded them here as well, as well as our labeling convention. So these are just for holding slides, sponsor loops, things like that. Uh, we're totaling right now about 12 cameras across two stages, and that's to get our tights, our wides, our crowd shots, and as well as the B stage. For audio routing, we're using this Q16. We don't really need a lot because we're basically getting program feeds from both the main stage and the B stage. So really this is just for me to mix my playback into one channel to send to those stages. So over here we have two playback machines with a separate graphics operator. And this person's gonna mainly be focused on sponsor loops, the Jumbotron, things like that while I'll be over here switching the actual live stream and stadium feed. So all of our ProPresenter machines are basically running through these deck links inside these Sonnet enclosures. This way we get nice clean feeds out and we're not having to route through an HDMI out where we could potentially get a notification or some sort of pop-up or something like that. So we always go through deck links because we get clean feed. The perks of going through the deck links instead of an Ultra Studio or something like that is we're getting four feeds out of one computer. That is a playback feed, a clock, which I think is very important and I put on pretty much everything per playback. And then we also have these extra graphics so we can do key and fills for overlays. Again, four feeds out of each computer and we have three computers just for playback. So then that takes us over to the rack. A lot of workarounds happening in this particular setup. These two video assists right here are how we are currently doing embeds and de-embeds for audio to our B stage. So basically I'm embedding uh, through the XLR inputs here a mix minus to go to the B stage. That way when we are showing B stage up here, they can be sending me their signal. I'm sending them a signal without them included in it back. So if they wanted to also put a feed up on their stage, they can do that without us ever having a feedback loop or something going wrong there. So we're doing mixed minuses to the B stage as well as to the A stage. And then this here is their feed coming back to me uh, with embedded audio. Right now their stage is currently off because it's at night, but this gets their embedded audio which I am de-embedding and then putting into our mixer so we can mix everything properly. The ATEM SDI Extreme ISO on top here is just for ISO records. We really don't plan on using this, but it is a good way to keep everything in sync and maybe get things out for social media quickly. We have a network switch on top. This is the Netgear AV line. We have a Constellation that's doing most of the heavy lifting here with the 40 inputs and 24 outputs. Hyperdeck primary and backup for records. And then we have just backup power. So we actually had to take out our studio converters from our rack because the whole stadium is wired with fiber. And we actually ended up running about 800 feet, five lines of 800 feet, all the way out to B stage. So we're doing a lot of fiber in this run. And these studio converters are via ethernet. So our studio converters are actually up on the fourth floor and we're running fiber to them. All right, so we are up here on the fourth floor where our cameras are placed for crowd shots, 
wider stage shots, just different feeds we would get from then having them at front of house. So four other cameras up here, each one has an ethernet cable coming out of them for power and signal. So we're running studio converters that are sitting over by the patch panel over there. We then come out of the studio converter via SDI and then we need to convert to fiber. So we now have a fiber converter there which runs into the patch panel all the way down to our trailer. At the trailer we then convert from fiber back to SDI to plug it into our constellation. So that is the whole signal flow. Now we need five different fiber lines to get all these signals. Four lines coming from the cameras all the way to us and then one program feed, but in this case it's actually a multi-view coming from the trailer up here. SDI to fiber back to SDI line is so we can get camera control of all of these cameras. We are using a simple decimator to split that one SDI feed into four feeds, one for each camera, the return feed, and that way we're getting camera control. So that's the whole workflow, a little bit complicated, but it basically narrows it all down to one ethernet per cable, which we can run anywhere along here to get the shot we want. That's the signal flow for our cameras, which then takes us to another workaround which we're doing, which is the ability to rescale an image and add borders on the side. And that's what this computer here is doing. So in a stadium, there's usually a jumbotron or a large LED wall. We're also using it in sync in conjunction with an LED wall on stage. The reason we're showing the same image on both is because the crowd in front of the stage won't be able to see the LED wall. The physical stage and trussing is blocking it. So we want to be able to push things to our upstage LED wall as well as the large jumbotron if you want to call it that. Mad Mapper saves the day yet again. Take in a 16 by 9 image out of the ATEM constellation. I am sizing it up to the correct size for our slightly wider LED wall on the back of the state. I'm adding these borders on the side and then I'm outputting that through one of these Ultra Studios in a 16 by 9. So I'm basically squeezing the image and sending it to the LED wall. Then over there in the processor and at front of house on main stage, they're going to take this image, stretch it to the actual aspect ratio of their LED wall. This is how we're using our 1080p and 4K to size different aspect ratio content to different size LED walls. The other thing that this is doing is it's setting a delay and I'm delaying my playback to the main stage LED wall. All right, I'll try to explain this during sound check. So Jumbotron, just because it's the biggest screen that the house system has. Then we have the upstage screen that's actually the center screen at the back of the stage. Now the big screen up here, that goes through the house system, through all their processing, so it has a significant amount of delay. Whereas the one on the upstage side, that one doesn't have nearly as much delay because it pretty much comes from the video controller up at front of house, right into the processor, right into the LED wall. So I had to figure out how to delay the video going to the upstage screen in order for it to be in sync with the Jumbotron. I did this using Mad Mappers because we know the ATEMs can't add video delay. Very easy to do audio delay, but video delay is harder. Once I had those two screens synced up, which wasn't that easy, then it was just about timing the audio, which is easy to delay, so that whenever I played back videos, then we were pretty easy to sync it all up. So that's how we did all that. Once I got that locked in, we were good to go. Quick, easy little Mad Mapper rig here, just to delay a video feed. It's not really doing any sort of heavy lifting because it's just taking a feed, storing it in memory for however many milliseconds and then pushing it right back out. So I'm not actually doing any sort of heavy graphics on this besides the delay for memory. So that's it for this setup here. Next, I'm gonna show you all the different locations that we're sending all of our signals, as well as the patch room, the patch bays all over the stadium, how we're getting signal to and from the B stage, and our long fiber run that we had to zigzag around just so we could fit it through all the cable ramps and out of high traffic areas. Let's get to it. Give me the smoke, give me the heat, you my wildfire. Give me a toe, breathing deep, you what I desire. Get too close to you, I might get burned. Well, that's okay because I like how it hurts. So I want all that smoke. Put on my heart in this, set ablaze my arsonist. Cupid got two hits, guess you and me got targeted. I got the hardest hit, straight down to my cartilage. Can't think about life and you ain't part hey, of it. I don't need hey. no lighter. Baby, cause you fire. Check me in the rehab. I know you gon' be. For me like my favorite habits keeping me high Need a search of general warning on them leave by I want all that's wrong 
All right, so now we are in the patch room or head end as Audi Field likes to call it. But basically this is where all the connections for the entire stadium come. And then we can interconnect with jumper cables, patch cables, whatever you want to call them to anywhere else. So our trailer was actually supposed to be located behind the stage, but because they had this room and said, yes, this is, you can patch into this. We were like, great. That's how we're going to do it. We're going to move our trailer right outside this room have all of our cables go right under the door. Don't worry, there is a pad underneath the door, so it just sits around top of the cables, and that is the way to do it. That's how all these cables are supposed to get in and out. And then this is, uh, this is the patch room. So, a bunch of fiber here, and so if you don't know a lot about fiber, just know that there is a difference between single mode and multi-mode fiber, and you need to pay attention and make sure your entire workflow is compatible. For what we're doing, we use a lot of single mode fiber. And as you can see, we are using a mix of fiber converters here. Uh, they are directional, so these ones are bi-directional. These are the black magic ones. We just have them labeled. And then we have this Aja converter down here that is getting four feeds receiving on our end. And there is a transmitter that has four feeds going out upstairs on the fourth floor. So that's how we're doing this. It didn't make sense to put like eight bi-directionals right here when really we have most of our feeds coming in and not a lot of feeds going out. So we want more receivers down here and transmitters up where the cameras are. So if you're looking at this and wondering why that doesn't really look like fiber, it's because there's a lot of different types of terminations for fiber, one of which is LC. So if you see two pairs that kind of look like this, these are individual ones, but they'll fit into an LC socket. So these are all directional. Basically a laser shoots down a very, very thin piece of glass inside these cables. And that is the signal going down. And just like SDI, it is directional. So if you're looking at these types of connections, and again, there's two of them usually, that's LC. So then you have this type of connection, which is FC. Now we're not even using FC here, but I have a bunch of these conversion cables here because our transmitters and receivers are all LC. So we need to be able to convert to not FC, but now we have ST. Now, the way you wanna think about this is these are like mini BNC type connectors. And I say type because they have the little rigid uh, dots at the top and bottom for you to stick the fiber in, rotate it, and then it locks. So if you're looking at the locking converters, that's ST for fiber. And then you wanna to go to LC, which is what the Blackmagic fiber converters and so many others use. And make sure you have single mode and multi-mode figure out in your workflow. They all need to line up. So that's your crash course for quick fiber. All right, we're out here on the main stage. There's a couple of things I wanna show you guys. One of which is front of house. So at front of house, we're gonna have the lighting control, the audio control, the video control. Currently the audio is at the front of the front of house and then lighting and video are behind them as they don't need to hear as much as well as see over them to see what's happening on the screens and on the lights that are high up. So that's one of the reasons they're placed behind. Then off to the two sides, we have the camera. So one is usually a tighter shot that's like waist and up. The other one is a head to toe shot. All right, and that just gives us options for the iMag and for our live stream. Then we also have two cameras that are in the pit. The pit is what is right in front of the stage. Now these cameras point up, they can also point back at the crowd, they can point into the stands. Pretty much all the cameras have full range wherever they need to go. Whatever we're doing, we call a lot of audibles when doing iMag. This is because we might do a kiss cam, a twerk cam, like any sort of thing we need to hit the audience with. The artist goes out into the crowd, wants to do crowd work, things like that. So the cameras are constantly moving, they're constantly on their toes. So right next to the cameras, we have the show collar. Now, for this particular show, the show collar couldn't actually fit at front of house. So they had a little stage off to the side, uh, and that's where the show collar is, and she runs the stage. She tells everyone what to do, when to play something, what cameras to look at, when to go. Now, when it comes to all the screens around the concourse here, obviously we're not pushing house sound, because the stage system is right behind here so it's plenty plenty loud but unfortunately we can't really change the video delay going to all of these screens there's lots of different ways they're doing it whether that's over ethernet uh, which is going to be ip whether that's over sdi whether that's any sort of conversion they're doing 
So basically, we just have to accept that all the screens around the stadium are going to be delayed, but at least the two screens that we can control, the Jumbotron, in this case, the upstage screen, they're perfectly synced with the audio, so everyone in the stadium, when they're looking up at the stage, they're seeing a show that both sounds good and looks good and is together. Got me sweating, you hotter than Vegas. Breathing heavy, my heart has been racing. Need a second, I gotta embrace it. Okay, cause you don't know what you do, my love. I still walk through flames for you. Just be sick. Give me that smoke, all the flames, all that heat.